All right, here's a five and three game to warm up. Maybe we'll start with uh, IPA the Wolf. Oh, we have a two and two record. <clears throat> start with an English. A five and three game to warm up. <clears throat> Just playing very solidly here. With the uh, kind of reverse Sicilian opening it up. Although a lot of times the main lines are not these open lines in the reverse Sicilian. But uh, I don't know if there's anything wrong with this. There's no particular benefit to me to uh, trading everything off here. He's kind of uh, <clears throat> stopped me from playing the uh, Botvinnik setup. So I think I will put the pawn here to stop the e-pawn from coming forward and then uh, develop my knight to this square. It's a good square for the knight. The Botvinnik setup would have the knight going to this square. So, you know, he could have gone for a uh, reverse Meroxy bind if he had put the pawn there instead of putting the knight there. I don't know if that works, but uh, <laughs> keeping with that reverse Sicilian theme might have been interesting. Yeah, let's castle. He's played very fast, huh? He's still at five minutes. <clears throat> yeah, it's a pretty standard position, I guess, still. I cannot say this is unusual. I could trade off the knight and develop my bishop to uh, e3. Distract him from this battery for a bit, and it's a good square. Good square for the bishop, looking at the queen side, where he might want a castle now that he's kind of weakened his king side a bit. He does. Yeah, so it seems logical to put the rook Put the rook here. <clears throat> Question is, what happens if he takes the a pawn with the bishop? So, rook here, bishop takes, pawn up to try and trap the bishop. He can attack it with the knight. Uh, and I can't uh, can't bring my queen up. The pawn's in the way. Yeah, I'd rather get my queen to this square. <clears throat> okay, I'll start by preserving the a pawn, I guess. And now I can push the b pawn, or I can play rook c8. Queen here probably runs into knight here. Yeah, his queen is defended. So let us uh, develop the rook. Okay, when he pushes here, I can go to um, h5, <clears throat> h4, rather. If he pushes g4, I can go to h4 with the knight. <clears throat> or back here. Okay, let's push push on the queen side here. Yeah, so he just wants to open things up. Let's uh, kick that knight. <clears throat> He's been, I think, a bit too casual here. I can go here with the queen now. Hmm, he can play um, a6. And I can't take it because there's a pin. But uh, if he takes, it'll open up the um, <clears throat> A-file, so I guess it'll be a standoff. He won't really be threatening to take. Oh, he goes that way. So he blocks the bishop. And he actually, he would have been threatening to take. He would take with the queen. <laughs> um, so let's try and open up the center, maybe bring a rook over here. Now would be a good time for him to kick my knight. <clears throat> but 
I could still go to uh, a5 and I can still grab this pawn uh, h h4 rather I can still go to h4 if he kicked that way he kicked this way so drop back Threatening to take that pawn. If he pushes, I'll take the other pawn. It'd be good to weaken these pawns that are rushing forward towards my king. <clears throat> yeah, so playing a reverse Sicilian in these open variations is a bit dangerous for black because um, the Sicilian is already a very sharp position and <laughs> one move can make all the difference. So. Uh, that's why in reverse Sicilians, they usually go for closed, closed variations. So now the bishop is going to come back to f4 and look at that square and coordination with the, uh, with the rook. So he says he doesn't like that idea. I could drop back here too, oh, but then I lose the knight. So I guess I have to take could push my pawn forward. He takes, I take, and I've got a pawn there. Nah, eh, probably pawn is better back here defending. <laughs> it's better defending. Okay, let's take. And we'll bring the knight out. Knight can hop in here, attacking the queen go to here. It's looking good to me. And yes, uh, <clears throat> he is continuing to just ignore things, trying to break through quickly. But uh, he's going to have his own problems here, isn't he? He's going to take that is what's going to happen. So let's leave that there for a while then, since it's not uh, not working right away. Here, let's drop the queen back here. I am threatening uh, <clears throat> threatening on c7 there. Ah, so he retreats his rook to defend. Knight here, knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, queen takes, queen takes, rook takes, rook takes. Yeah, he's got c6 covered. Let's try and activate the bishop. Not so afraid of this opening here. Because uh, I can just lift my king up and bring a rook over. <clears throat> so he goes there. Oh, he's attacking this pawn. So let's play the check. I can't take with the rook. Too bad. <clears throat> so I probably didn't play that right. Uh, one, two, three, four. Well, it's about even, I guess, with four pawns versus four. He could have, I think, doubled his rooks, but maybe he didn't want to do that because it left the uh, C pawn hanging. But this is turning into not much. Maybe see some trick at the end here. 
check and take pawn. This pawn is hanging too. His king is also uh, <laughs> going to get mated if he opens up his back rank here. If he leaves his back rank open, his king will get mated. Whereas my king has squares to run to. Mm -hmm. So he decided to defend, defend rather than attack. I decided to get rid of the uh, the mate threat. So if I go here to uh, threaten the check on the back rank, unfortunately the uh, this pawn is left undefended, and I kind of want to keep that pawn. can check here and trade queens. <clears throat> Maybe I should have given the queen check first. No, no, I can't do that until I've got a pawn here. If he takes the pawn, I'll have a strong passed pawn here. Ah, so he goes for the end game. Yeah, I guess the end game is good for him, huh? Maybe it's a draw, though, because my king will be in front of his pawn. I use my king to round up these. He'll have to take this. And uh, yeah, I can start running right away, I guess. <clears throat> uh -huh, yeah, it's one of these situations where you can take the pawn, but I'm in front of the pawn. So it's just a draw. And I can't run out of time because we have the increment. So our score will remain even. IPA the wolf. I guess we're pretty well matched. There's a simple algorithm for doing this, so I don't have to think very much. Just always go to this square when you can. If you can't go there, fall straight back. The king comes forward. You oppose the king. So three rolls handles all cases. And that's a draw. <laughs> he can work the pawn all the way down, but it's still a draw at the end. Uh, okay, well, let's see if we can play a rapid game then. Ivan Ivan Ivanenko Vladimir. Let's see what he plays. Yeah, I just had a Sicilian like structure. I feel like playing something different. Maybe a French. Yeah, <laughs> he plays this weird stuff. Okay. He take, right? He's got two pawns hanging. <laughs> Maybe this is a uh, gambit line he's going to play. Okay, well, now that we're out of the opening, now that we're out of the opening here, I should slow down and think about the position. <clears throat> if he took, you know, I'd have a queen here, he could chase with the knight, and he'd have an isolated queen's pawn. I think actually that's a fine position for white, but he chose to push the uh, e-pawn. So I can attack it and see how he's going to defend, probably with the d-pawn. Do I want the knight here? No, I don't want the knight there because I want to push the c-pawn. 
So knight c6 looks normal, attacking the pawn, but then after d4, defending the knight is in the way of the c pawn. So I think knight c6 is a mistake. So I'm going to develop the other knight, and I can't bring it to uh, f6, so I'll bring it to g6, I guess. And he checks along this diagonal. I'll just play pawn to c6. And uh, we'll, I still have the idea of pushing that pawn to uh, c5 later to undermine the center. Which might be even more interesting with the knight on g6 putting pressure on the e pawn already. Looks like uh, king side castling should work fine here in this position. Okay, this is a double attack. <laughs> I didn't have to think about that for too long. <laughs> I'm attacking the e-pawn and I'm attacking the b-pawn. Yeah, maybe he plans to play a gambit here, but uh, I have no, I don't believe in this gambit. I have no confidence this is a correct thing to do. So I can just take his pawn. I think I should. I mean, he can put his bishop on a good diagonal, but um, how about I take the pawn, he plays bishop b2, and then I play f6, defending the knight there, trying to keep a strong center. Then when he plays the queen here, check. If I block, then he can actually get the pawn back. Okay, so that's not working. How about knight takes pawn, bishop b7, uh, bishop b2 rather, Knight takes pawn, bishop b2, and then I play bishop to d6, defending the knight that way. Or even queen here, but I like getting the bishop out first. Then there's no queen check. I can just bring the queen out, but then I can bring my queen out. Yep, yeah, let's take it. Take that pawn. <clears throat> You know, sometimes people just try too hard to get unusual positions. It's not the greatest idea. Not always the greatest idea. Sometimes, you know, an unusual position will confuse your opponent. Like here, that would, that would have been a mistake, so I need to uh, unpin. Right? Bishop d6, pawn to f4 is a threat, attacking my pinned knight. Do I have a good move there? I just castle, he takes the knight. I can put a rook here, but uh, he can just give the back the pawn, and I'm down a piece for a pawn or two. So I think I have to unpin. I didn't consider that move. Did not consider his queen move there. I probably should have. So bishop b7, <clears throat> bishop b2, I mean pawn to f6, I guess. Or the knight, I could defend with the knight now. But it looks like my pieces are in danger of getting clogged up. Oh, I could just uh, move the knight. If he plays bishop b2 attacking the knight, I can move it. Force a queen trade. In fact, it may be hard for uh, hard for black to avoid a queen trade. <laughs> I can do it that way, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's too funny. <laughs> there was this threat of the knight coming in here, taking advantage of the pin, I guess. But the king had an escape square, so it wasn't such a huge threat. Okay, so do I want to play knight to um, c4? Or do I want the knight just to go back to g6? Knight c4 controls the b2 square, keeps the bishop from getting on that good square. And prepares to uh, increase the pressure over here on the queen side. Yeah, I'm kind of liking this.
maybe follow up with queen um, f6 if he doesn't um, if he doesn't trade queens anyway if he trades queens I'll take with the bishop I still want to get bishop to f6 this diagonal looks good to me looks good for me He can play e3 here, or d3, d3 I guess that is. Okay, ah, he's hitting this pawn. Well, that pawn I wanted to defend. Let's defend it this way. Also defending f7. Maybe his idea is to chase my knight and then play bishop b7. Bishop b2. I keep making that mistake. So yeah, he plays e3, d3. It kicks my knight. I go back to, say, uh, d6 here. And then he plays bishop b7. Attacking this pawn. Which is a little awkward for me because I can't... Uh, well, if I push forward to hit his queen, I guess I could play that. That would still work. So let's do this now then. Um, oh, he uh, he's attacking. He's attacking my d pawn again. I want to get in the move uh, b6, that's why. I'm kind of eager to play that. Chase his queen away. He has nowhere to go on this... Uh, rank. That'll be covered by queen. These light squares will be covered by the pawn and the bishop, and the knight will cover this square. So chase the queen right off of that. Anyway, my center is quite solid here. I just want to have the flexibility of, you know, a few more places to put the knight when he kicks it. Right now it has to go back to d6. Oh, he decides to trade. Okay, give up the bishop. Yeah, it's true. That was an annoying piece there that night. But I thought just pushing d3 was a, a reasonable way to get rid of it. Hmm. Okay, so now when I kick the queen, the queen can go to this square where it's defended by the knight. Um, so let's bring the other knight out. <clears throat> I still want to be able to kick the queen back to a worse square. I don't want um, black, white. I don't want white getting control of this diagonal. I want to get my bishop there first and castle. So, so that's my plan is to try and arrange b6, bishop b7. And uh, after b6, the queen would run here. Now it can't go there. So it can't get onto this diagonal, and I can play bishop b7 myself. Now, after the queen moves, he's planning to um, bring his knight in to attack my bishop. That's the point of this uh, rook move here. So maybe he can get a pawn back there. Well, we'll see where the queen goes first. Yeah, this is a, you know, pretty serious pin along the E file here. So even if I get the queen out of the way, the bishop will still be pinned against the king. And so a knight coming into this square or to this square will be a problem. So that's why he's offering the queen trade there. But in this case, I will just kick the queen again. Don't mind a queen trade. 
also take control of this square. And when I take back with the bishop, I've actually unpinned this bishop. So if he attacks from this side, maybe I can just find a nice square for my bishop. Hmm. Well, not so easy to find a nice square, actually. But I could go here, where at least uh, I could get traded off for a pawn and wouldn't lose material. Without the queens, doesn't matter if my king position is a little shaky. His position is not so great either, and I'm still a pawn up. So he goes there. Yeah, I'm not anxious to take his queen. I just want to get uh, castled here. So the knight. <clears throat> I guess I have to take the queen first. So if I move the bishop first and he plays the knight here to this square attacking my bishop. Oh, well, I could just, um, then, then I'm a queen up. I shouldn't worry about that line. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so I take the queen, he has to take back. And then, uh, and then there's no problem here, right? I'll have, I'll have a move or two to unwind. So I'll just play here and get castled. Yeah, this bishop is on a great diagonal now. Unfortunately, he can he can oppose with his bishop, but... Oh, he discovered a tactic. Yeah, that's true. If I take the knight, he will take the bishop. He's also threatening my rook. So where should I go? could lift the rook up to h2. I could move it to, I mean, h7, or I could move it to g8. Can he attack it on h7? Or is it just better on g8 anyway? So after I move, he doesn't have to move his uh, his knight right away. Uh, so I will I will unpin with my king next. Where's his follow-up move? If he doesn't move the knight, well, if he doesn't move the knight, I'm threatening to take his knight and then take this knight. So I guess guess he will have to move the knight. I could uh, castle queenside too. Threatening bishop takes, what I meant is, I'm threatening bishop takes knight and then rook takes knight. Because he has to respond over here or he loses this rook. So he goes there attacking my bishop. So yeah, if I just castle queenside here, he can take here with check. <clears throat> and then I take back and then he takes with the rook. And I can take his knight but I also can move my knight with check. Is there some really great thing I could do with that? So I castle, he takes, I take, he takes, yeah. And I move my knight here with check and take his rook. <clears throat> but that works only if I play this first. So let's see, because I have to open up the line to his king. <laughs> I almost forgot that. But uh, yeah, you got to play these right. So I mean, I'm attacking his rook. 
So I don't think he has time to take here. Yeah, so now I castle queenside and I've got a discovered check against his king. So when he takes here, I'll take back. And then he can't take with the rook. <clears throat> and at the end of the day, this pawn is hanging too. If he doesn't take back here, yeah, maybe I can find some other cool thing to do with the discovered check. Well, this pawn is only hanging if he moves his knight. But I'm thinking knight takes, pawn takes. If rook takes, then I have knight here check. So I guess knight takes, pawn takes, and then he plays um, g3. I guess that's good enough. So I have to get rid of the knight. I don't have a discovered check there because his knight was hitting my rook. So if he moves his king away from the discovered check, I'll just grab this pawn. He takes this pawn. I'll grab this pawn, and, and I'll have this outside passer here. So he defends, yeah. This is still hanging now. But if the bishop takes it, I can play here. So what I will do is um, push this pawn forward. Well, now first, let's take some time. I should first consider every possible discovered check, right? The knight can go to six squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. The backwards ones don't look like they do anything. This one maybe does. Discovered check here. King moves, then I can jump into this square. Hitting this pawn. Or I could go into this square. Hitting that pawn and looking towards the center. I could also do the same kind of trick on this side. But then the forward squares I have are this one and this one. So discovered check here, king moves, knight here, the bishop. No, the rook has to move, then I take his bishop. So if I wanted to get rid of his bishop, I could. But is that such a great accomplishment here? I think I'd rather have the active knight. And we'll just see where that king goes. Okay, so knight here. Yeah, I just recognized you can take this pawn and then maybe take here with the rook instead of with the bishop. I was counting on, you know, bishop takes, rook here, getting this point. So let's see, I can go here hitting his rook. Rook will take, I can take here, he can take here. And then, uh, then what? Then I can go after. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure where. Where should I go? Knight here forks the two pawns. Knight here hits the rook and hits one pawn, but also controls some squares around his king. Knight here hits the rook, attacks this pawn. <clears throat> yeah, one good thing about this position is my uh, his his rook is out of play, but I'm not getting into there very quickly. This square might be better used for the the rook. This square. Maybe maybe this square goes to be maybe that square should be used by the rook.
maybe this Rick can go to the F file and threaten to take here. We'll see how he reacts. Got to activate those rooks, especially while his rook is not so active. Would be the time to do this. And yeah, his bishop controls the entry square here, but I can go to this square, and then this rook can get here. If his bishop comes out to defend, I'll probably take, if he takes back with the pawn. Ah, so he does none of the above, but that's a smart move, actually. That's, um, <clears throat> yeah, although it blocks in his bishop. Pros and cons. So if I, um, let's stop here. If I put the uh, rook here, he might kick my knight. I, you know, I'm threatening this, this pawn when he pushes the A pawn, I'm threatening the B pawn, but I'd have to move my knight first. And I could go to here, he could take here, and then I could take here. And then I'm threatening this pawn. We'll see what he can do here. If he doesn't kick my knight, I'm just going to take this pawn, let him take here, and then uh, move my knight somewhere. But so I can go after the B pawn, basically. So where's the best? Where's the best square for the knight? Here, back to here, maybe. Mm, that gives him a tempo though to attack it. Yeah, there's not so many squares the knight can go to from there. So I take, I could come out to here. Maybe it's an idea and then come back this way if the rook is no longer on this file. Yeah, I'm a pawn down at this point, but I do have the active pieces, so. <clears throat> I really don't know who's better. Yeah, so he starts to bring his pieces out. Let's uh, take there, like I said. Ah, he's taken away this square from the knight. But I can come back here, attack his bishop. Rick takes pawn knight f3. Bishop moves, then what? Then I'll take this pawn or put my rook to attack that pawn. Bishop's just going back, I think. Oh no, it could go here. That's a trade. It gives me this pawn. But it activates his rook. Maybe it's a good trade for him. And if I get the pawn back, then the pawns are even. But uh, he's got three on four over here, and he's got a passed pawn over here. So it's looking kind of evenish. Yeah, I think my best is just to go ahead and do that. Um, well, there is one more option I should think about. Rook here, hitting the bishop. Where does it go? Because then I'm really threatening to take it. Can go here and rook check. 
Yeah, I think that's better. I think that is better than what I originally planned. The uh, I'm just taking advantage of the fact that his bishop has so few squares. Even if he brings a rook back to defend, I can I can bring my rook in here to the second rank check, drive his king back. And that that bishop will be a goner. Well, if this works, it's a good example of how uh, peace activity can be more important than a pawn. Of course, if it doesn't work, it's probably just me making mistakes, but uh, you know, even average players should be able to play like this and take advantage of peace activity. Something you should strive for in your games, even if it doesn't work every time. <laughs> Yeah, everywhere the bishop moves, I can take it, right? I have um, the fork here. I'm threatening to take it, yeah. And um, when he plays there, that was the only defense. And I have the check here. And the king has to go back. Can't come forward, and then I can take the bishop. I was just double-checking everything. It's important. I might, uh, oh no, I don't have time to take this pawn. I was going to say, maybe I should throw in the check here if he just goes straight back. But um, of course, the bishop is defending there. That would give the bishop a square to go to. <laughs> that would be a bad thing. <laughs> have to take advantage of the fact that bishop has no moves. Yeah, so he goes there, so I will take. And he's just got to hope that um, he can win with his extra pawns versus my uh, extra piece. But I am, I can't just take here now. Well, he can come here. Yeah, maybe it's not so good. See, if I take the pawn and the king goes here, it's attacking two pieces, attacking the rook and the uh, and the knight, so it's a fork. Ah, I could bring the other rook here, check. Drive his king back to the corner. If he doesn't, uh, well, we'll see what he does. He can start checking me now. And, um, or he could put his rick behind the pawns and just start trying to push them. And, uh, but if he leaves his king alone here, I might try to mate him. I think that's a definite possibility here. This, this uh, rick here, rick here is mate, right? That's a mating pattern. Yeah, that is mate. Well, we'll see if he finds a way out of this one. He's been very creative as a player. I mean, <laughs> he played an oddball opening for sure. <laughs> but uh, I found some tactics I missed. One at least. Let's see what he finds here. So to avoid the mate, he has to take the, the knight. But if he takes the knight, yeah, because my king can run away from the checks. I can go here and here, no more checks. So if he takes the knight and I take back its check, and then the king moves to protect the rook, and I can take the rook, and then I can take the pawn, I'm just a, just a piece up, So uh, just a rook up. So this is just mate, though. Maybe he was just checking to see if I noticed. So I'm checking to make sure it's really mate, right? King has only one move. He's in check. <clears throat> I 
Well, that was a nice game. So I uh, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this session and I will see you next time. Bye now.